Okay, it is Monday, November 15th at 4.37. The Board of Commissioners of the Hardwick Electric Department is meeting. Uh, all commissioners are present. Uh, Commissioner Ambrosino is connected by phone. And we have General Manager uh, Mike Sullivan and we have Beth Essery also here. Did I say that right? Yes, you did. And uh, Jim from HCTV is with us. So we have a quorum present. Um, on the agenda, I would like to add three items onto the agenda. I sent everyone an email about that. Um, maybe we take those up before Sean comes, or we can take them up later. I, I, I'd say we get them right now. Okay, so uh, those are the Christmas party, uh, the delegation of authority, and an energy committee representative. What's the last one? Energy committee representative. Any objection? No. Hearing none, those are added to the agenda. Um, so the next item is the minutes of the prior meetings, and I think we have two sets of minutes. One was attached, which was for the meeting. Am I hallucinating, Mike, or were they attached? 10, 18, and one was in there, and then one where, was. Where in the packet are? Uh, should be in order. There's some at the end too. Oh, there's a separate. There's a separate. Oh, it's it's right in the front. Yeah. yeah. Um, okay, the, yes, yeah, so there's the minutes for the September 20th meeting. September. Doing a little catch up. Yep. Um, I have uh, one change. It's a second bullet. I, I think it should read the agenda was modified. I don't modify the agenda on my own. Okay. Are there any other? Changes people want to the minutes from the 20th? Is there a motion to approve them as amended? I move to approve as amended. Second? This is for both of them? No, we take them one okay. at a time. Second. Uh, any objection? Hearing none, the minutes of the 20th are approved. And then we have minutes from October 18th. Are there any changes? Again, I just have a typo, but I kind of like the second bullet, Cherry. Is that my, I don't look like a first name. It should be Chair, it's just a typo. Sorry. That's all right. Not a big deal. Uh, did anybody have anything else in, in the minutes from the 18th? No. Is there a motion to approve? I move to approve. Second. Second. Any objection? Hearing none, the minutes are approved. Okay. Um, there is no public. So, I, unless Jim, you have something that you want to say. Um, I think then we go to the Christmas party. And the reason that this is. Um, on the agenda is because of COVID. And um, wondered what, because uh, there was nothing in the email that went out about um, what, what the protocol is going to be. Because I, I, I will say, and I'm speaking for myself, and understand that I, I will not go, regardless of the protocol, to uh, the Highland Lodge, because I think the building is too closed in. Okay. It's it's just a very closed in space, um, but if if it's going to go forward, and I have no desire to be the Grinch, and I, I suspect that that's true for the other commissioners, though people can speak for their, for themselves. Um, I think there needs to be a, a, a protocol um, that's a, at least consistent, because because the. Health department is recommending against large mixed gatherings. Okay. So, so having a Christmas party at all is is a is a question mark. 
Yeah, I completely forgot that we didn't have one last year. That's, I didn't even. I just asked Deb, hey, we're going to do a Christmas party this year. If so, get something organized, and she did. Yeah, so. I know. Under under non-COVID, I think I think the Highland Lodge. Personally, I think the Highland Lodge is lovely. You know, and we had the Christmas party there a couple of years ago. It was it was very nice. I think people enjoyed themselves. Um, no, I'll send out an email to everybody and get us all on the same page with. Well, first thing I'm going to do is get enough feedback that it's even worth having a party and let people know what the health department is recommending. But I, so. I mean, I think, I mean, in terms of a protocol, I think what I've been seeing on mixed events is, first of all, requiring masking when people aren't eating for everybody, and um, also requiring testing beforehand and, and having a, a, a contact list with everybody's details. And I realize, you know, Half of people will be employees, but some of them won't. Or you know, not, right. Some of them will be dates rather than. Uh, yep. As far as menus go, I, I don't know if you're already committed, but the. No, the, we're not. Okay. The ceiling, like at Highland, the Highland Center for the Arts, is much, much more open. I don't know what they have for ventilation, but I assume it's pretty good ventilation. I mean, the ceiling is 20 feet high. Yeah, it's, that's a point made. I don't know if anybody else has anything that they. Yeah, want to I regret. I think that Christmas party is really an important, good thing to do for morale. Everybody earns it all year long. So, I'm in general a, a supporter, and I'm in general always planning to be there. In fact, when I got the email, I put it in my calendar. Said I got to get there, and then I ran it by Margie, my <laughs> spouse. And she said, are you kidding me? <laughs> Crazy. Exactly. <Yeah. laughs> okay. We're not going, you're not going. Um, so, but that's, you know, we're in a different age profile. Than, than, than most of the employees, yeah. yeah. Well, to speak for another age profile, I was told that if I went, I would live upstairs for the next two weeks. <laughs> <laughs> well, this, this is legit. I mean, you guys can say, no, I don't think that's a good I don't idea. Think, I, don't think, I don't think we want to say you can't do it, and especially it having already gone out. But I, I think, I mean, my personal view is, is that every precaution that can be taken should be taken. Um, or and, put it off this spring or wait and see. I'm sorry, say again? Or put it off to the spring or wait and see. Well, that's another thing that people, you know, I we think maybe do. We can do something in my house again. That was outside. Yeah, that was great. That was fine. Yeah, no, it, it's... Um, and I think to, if, with whatever you decide, because I think we're being sincere, and, and I think we are in, being, in wanting to not prescribe, not dictate on this, because it is a somewhat gray area, that... You just keep, you know, keep everybody safe. And if you decide, if you decide you have to do something different, it is reasonable that whenever you told Deb to, to, to organize it, the numbers were totally different. You know, the yes, they were. Orleans County, yeah. Caledonia County, this whole area has gone it's, through the roof. It's yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So it's kind of whatever you whatever you decide. I think you've got some. Cover. Okay. Well, I will let everybody know what's up. Um, I think we were waiting. Uh, I'm switching topics now to the delegation of authority. And we didn't hear anything back from you. Right. On we were going to get the final draft of notes that Roger took at the meeting. You were gonna, you were gonna approve them, and I said, "Well, I'd like to see them all together." Okay. And do we have, do we have that? You were document control. I was document control. <laughs> oh lord. All there right. was nothing on there that was heartburn. Oh no, they were easy to get them all. And look, together. if you're in a pinch, if you don't have your notes, I can go back. I, I'll have to, I'll have to look. I then I apologize for dropping the ball, but I, I. I don't think there's any stumbles there other than. I'll have to I'll have noise. to dig through and see if, if if I have the notes. If not, Roger, I'll get back to you. To me together with okay. You, yeah. So I'm just going to make a note to put that on the agenda for next month. 
Yes? Yeah, yes. that would be great. And anything you guys want, then please tell me, because I always wonder. <coughs> um, maybe this isn't on the agenda as an agenda item, but it's just popping into my head. So um, maybe kind of in the middle of the month, a couple of weeks before the meeting, maybe send out an email to all of us I can do that. asking if we have any items that we want to include on the agenda. That'd be helpful. So that'll sort of get people thinking, yeah. is there something? Uh, as long as we're doing that, I'd like to just talk about a remote access. Like, when I'm here, I can set up the Zoom or whatever, and the only thing that was missing last time was that we didn't have a password and the guest network. But if you just like the select board meeting, you know, we'd have a link and people could call in. And it could be audio only, or we could use the, I don't know if that, the projector is part of your equipment or not, um, or that's like the slide board equipment. Uh, we now. Okay, but I mean, as far as that goes, even like the hard uh, electric having just a small projector, and uh, if I'm here, I can use my computer, you know, to just set it up and project it the same way that we had at the select board. I, I, we are so far out of my envelope. If there's not somebody who can do it, Vince, I, I just don't see. Oh, yeah, yeah. Unless, well, unless one of the other commissioners is volunteering to, well, and actually, to manage it. Yeah, and Leif said that, that you would be able to also. I don't know. I mean, it's really not, it's nothing. Yeah, so I'm, I mean, I'm going to be here. But I, I, I mean, I think it's personally just really important. Like, you know, Mike could come in or or Sean could uh, do it remotely. I mean, especially with COVID, too. I mean, it's a, you know, it's a... It, well, there may come a time when we go back, I hope not fully to the remote, but um, I hope that doesn't happen. So, um, I mean, I, I guess what I'd like to say is that we make uh, every meeting from now on have a, a Zoom link, you know, make it a hybrid meeting, and I'll just set it up when, we, when I get here, and then I can show someone else. We can, we can only have the Zoom link if we know that we're going to be able to do it with the Zoom link. Right. We and, can't and put a Zoom link in there and then find that people can't No, no, out. absolutely. And the, you know, I would put, you know, I mean, my plan is to be here at every meeting. But what happens if you're not? Right. Cause but, but what I do is let you know beforehand, well, well in time for uh, the time required for the warning, uh, that I was going to be there. And then, uh, you know, I mean, it could, because if I had a car accident or something, that's the same kind of thing that could happen anyway. So that's the same kind of disaster or impediment that would happen in any case. But if I say I'm going to be there on Monday, say, for example, and the morning time is 72 hours, then it would be plenty of time. It's not 72. This is our regular No, no, I'm going to say for example, but yeah. whatever it is. You know, if, if I know what it is, then I would, I would uh, give a firm commitment right before that. Welcome, Howdy. Sean. Good evening. Are you in session yet? Am I interrupting? Come on, no, 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 no. We, we actually started earlier, but, but but yeah, we, I messed up. We actually started at four thirty, and I was late. Oh, okay. You can, you can you can sit on the table right there. Yeah, yeah. The, <laughs> Come right these here, chairs please. are more comfortable, Sean. Sean I will yeah, tell you. Those are just kind of slide out of yeah, it. Oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> keep on going. Um, okay. Uh, the other is an energy committee representative. Um, I'd love to do it. Well, you're not, you don't live in Hardwick. And I, I think it needs to be somebody who is a Hardwick person to be on the Hardwick Energy Committee. Yeah, I actually, I talked to Bill Chitsi about that. and uh, I think it needs to be. No, no, that, that, that's fine. And, you know, his immediate reaction was it didn't matter to him. I, I think it either needs to be an employee of HED Frankly, I think it probably should be an employee of HED. Um, I, I, what, the reason this even came up in my mind is because I was at a meeting in Stowe uh, dealing with some energy efficiency things in a building that I'm involved with there, and someone from Stowe Electric was there. He was the representative of the Stowe Energy Committee. Uh, he was the representative from Stowe Electric on the Stowe Energy Committee. And I, 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 I think it's important 
to know what they're doing, to work with them. You know, I don't know how it's going to yeah, play out. Really I think they're finding their way. Um, mm -hmm. yeah, but I spent half an hour with them after the last light board meeting. That's, that's fine. And I think, you know, anybody can go to their meetings if they allow that. But I think, I don't know, I don't know what others think, but I think... I mean, is, is there a stricture against... Uh, because, because it could be confusing because Commissioners don't speak for the commission. They only speak for themselves. And as an individual, you're not a Hardwick resident. So, and I think for commissioners to be on something representing Hardwick Electric, then without the board setting out what the position is, you're, you're, it's, it's yeah, confusing. I, 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 see, I see what you mean. I'm just thinking practical, from a practical perspective, I guess it would be conveying of information, a two-way conveyance of information. But, but you can't convey for Hardwick Electric. I can't convey for Hardwick Electric without the board making, taking a position on what it is. And whereas someone, whether it's Mike, or I don't know if this is something that, that, um, that Beth could be doing depending upon when they're meeting or I, I think that it... Speak of it. Here he is. I, you know, I think, I think that that's something that... Uh, what, 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 I mean, what do you see the function of the representative being? From to to keep us surprised and sometimes to, to speak for whatever the electric department's capabilities or, 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 or view is. And I think that, as I said, I think that that's something that no individual commissioner can speak to without the board having made a decision right. first. Without the implication of, of and and, the and so it, it's it's confusing uh, to have somebody there. So that's you know I don't so Mike you know I mean we haven't had a chance to discuss this I don't know whether this is that's something fine that. I don't mind. I don't know that we even need a, a motion for it, or we can have a motion for it. But I think the key is, though, with our community, our efforts on community relations is however we staff it, have somebody who's enthusiastic and leaning in and really participating. Yeah. And it's hard for it's hard for us to burden somebody on Mike's staff, including Mike, unless they're enthusiastic you know unless they say gee <laughs> I'd like to do that I mean you're doing me a favor by letting me do that as opposed to your doubling you know your yeah I know, like I said I don't know anything about yeah. what they, their goals are or whatever I go yeah. find out and see if we can line some stuff up and you know I'm not saying for anyone on the board me or anyone else to do it but I mean I, I, I think that it's pretty easy to keep separate uh, representation you know, saying you're representing the board's opinion or something, and uh, uh, from actually getting information that can then be reported to the board, for example. I mean, what, that's it goes back to the purpose of the of, of the representative, you know, which is, I guess, is is it to work with Hydro Electric Department? Is it? To, um, I think it, I think it may be both. I I I don't know because I don't know exactly what the Energy Committee is going to be doing, because from what I gathered from the select board, hello. Do you, uh, we have a member of the public here who, what, can you say your name? I'm Bill Chitfield, and I'm the Energy Coordinator, appointed by the select board. Okay. Well timed to be here. Perfect timing. Just the guy we need. Um, <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm here to be available and listen and take some notes. What, um, having a new committee, it struck, it struck some of us, or struck me at least, that it would be good to have a representative from the electric department on the committee. Well, that sounds wonderful to me. The difficulty, what we've been talking about, is that the commissioners don't speak for the electric department or the board individually we speak by our actions, just like the select board. Mm -hmm. And 
so we're trying to understand what 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 do you see as the charge for the for the energy coordinator for your committee? What is it that you're doing? At least insofar as electric stuff is concerned. Well, within our first year, goals I've set are uh, to work on the municipal building baseline and look for opportunities to reduce waste. So we have the municipal buildings, including the um, water pumping and the uh, sewage treatment plant. This is this everything from insulation to controls? So mechanical to... So, um, but to do that, I, I have to um, continue to seek members of the committee. Um, so far, I have not found another member yet, but I will continue to do that. And I'd also like to involve young people, some of the uh, <laughs> students in the uh, high the school here. and the um, tech school. Um, so that's the first three things. So maybe Lynn, you know, this is this this may be different than what you were envisioning with the issue. If if this committee's understaffed in need of some energy, and the committee itself doesn't have a concern with someone who lives in Grassbury instead of Hardwick contributing, I guess. I, I guess, but with the understanding that they're not speaking for Hardwick Electric, if yep. any questions come up. But, 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 right, they're not speaking for it, but they, they're in a good position to say, gee, that's something we can consult with Mike Sullivan. About. Get back to you on that. You know, that's... that's it seems odd to me. Oh, well, it does. It, does. It, seems, it seems very odd to me that, that, that somebody who is not part of the town is, is on a town governmental... Committee. But it does help them to have a bridge or a loop. But 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 that well, that's why I brought it up. Yeah. Um, and if it's if it's if it's if it's if it's not something for an employee to be involved with, then so, so but it, I mean, wouldn't necessarily have to be a member of the committee. It could be a liaison, you know, for example, from the from the board or or the heart of the collective department. I, well. Yeah. I mean, and that, that way it really is an exchange of information. And I mean, it, what, what do you see the role of, say, for example, um, like uh, Lynn proposed, the representative from Martin Electric, what, what would you, would you see the role of somebody like that being to, do you, does that prompt anything? Well, I welcome it because uh, I uh, see you uh, in this room a uh, serious individuals who care about their community, environment, and our country. So I, I would think anyone would be highly qualified to serve on the committee. Um, and our committee has a very practical mission at this point. So a, a person might be interested in participating in one of those, one of those um, line items, I guess I'd call it. So for, for an example, we want to audit the, the uh, sewage treatment plant of all the motors and huh. all the electrical use within the next couple months. So, so you're, you're hands-on, you're actually doing these things, there's a budget for doing it, and those get sent as recommendations to whatever, the select board or something. But that you would be doing through Efficiency Vermont, right. I would assume. In partnership. Yeah. I, I have a unique uh, position with Efficiency Vermont as uh, one of their participating <coughs> energy uh, network contractors. So uh, I have several engineers that are on a first name basis and ready to help. And I can uh, network to help the town. So, so it could affect our electric by the fact that you recommend they put in 500 heat pumps, <laughs> for example. <laughs> Well, we have a lot of work to do. And so uh, it seemed practical to start with our municipal buildings and form a baseline and demonstrate our, our abilities. And uh, committee members and uh, citizens can learn how to do it for themselves and their businesses and homes. Thank you for listening to me. Oh, thank you for being here. Yeah. Um,
I've, and, been, and, I've and, been in the HVAC industry 42 years. So, uh, efficiency and uh, conservation have always been the most rewarding part of that profession to me. I'm not sure where that leaves us. I mean, it's, it's I think so, you shouldn't turn down. That, that's that's <laughs> fine. That's fine. I, th I, th I think as a liaison, sure. Yeah, I mean, I guess we go to the meetings and then give her a short report of what's going on. For example. And, and should and something then, come up, just get in touch with Mike. Yeah. Um, I, I have seen that done in other energy committees. And you should feel free to be in touch with Mike as well. Oh, I, uh, he's uh, very accessible, I found. Very helpful. Good. Always good to hear. OK. Um, is there any other public comment or any discussion? If not, I think we move on to Sean's purchase power update. Good evening, Welcome, everyone. Sean. Thank you, Len. Mike, do you happen to have an extra copy of the, uh, thank you. Hey Mike, I like the charts and graphs. Great. Colorful, forward looking. <laughs> now you got to tell us what they really mean. <laughs> well, yeah. Mike Ambrosino, can you hear okay? I hear reasonably well. You just slide that over. Yeah, thank you. That better? I'll speak up. So, good evening. I'm Sean from Vermont Public Power Supply Authority. There's about half a Actually, minute. before you start, I'm very sorry. Go ahead. Uh, can we at least introduce everybody? Oh, yeah. That's a good idea. <laughs> Beth, you might as well start. <laughs> <laughs> um, I'm Beth Essery. I am the new um, controller and business office supervisor. I started two weeks ago, and uh, I had actually come here from SEDC, so I had actually come here a couple of trips before, and Mike and I worked out, a, he was pretty persistent about trying to get me to come up here, so I'm actually very, very excited to be here. Um, I'm putting together things and working on projects, and I've just got a whole lot to do, <laughs> but it's been very busy, and so far it's very, very rewarding. I love Vermont. I'm very happy to be here. And I kind of made a joke with my family. I said, I picked the wrong time of year to move to Vermont. But that's OK. <laughs> Trial by <You> fire. <laughs> that's true. But you that's OK. <laughs> Summer will seem so much better than <laughs> Go ahead. I'm Roger Prevo, uh, Commissioner. Nan Smith, the Commissioner. Mike Smith. Uh, Mike Smith. Mike Smith. Mike Smith. Mike Smith. Vince O'Connell, uh, Commissioner. I'm Lynn Gedankana, Commissioner. So, good evening, everybody. I'm Sean Enterline, mm -hmm. and I work for the Vermont Public Power Supply Authority, which uh, manages power supply uh, contracts for Hardwick Electric and 10 other municipalities in Vermont and a couple others around New England. Um, half a dozen slides here, mostly designed to invoke discussion and questions. All the answers are on the first page. The executive summary simply says, hey, year-to-date 2021, we're about 2% lower than budget. That's uh, well within the margin of error. Um, 2022, however, is expected to be a more expensive year. 4.8% uh, higher is the forecast at this point. And there are three reasons. Uh, primarily, energy prices uh, for next year are doubles on average what they were in the previous years. That sounds scary on its face, but as you'll see, we're coming off some historic lows. So this is uh, part of the cycle of business, really. Uh, explanation number two we've discussed before, it's transmission. It is up on all three fronts. Uh, Ice in New England, which is regional. Uh, Velco, which is our state. And Green Mountain Power, which is the most local utility that provides transmission to us. And then lastly, um, this, this coming year will be the first full year where we have the output of the H11 solar project. That reduces costs in other parts of our budget, but, but for the purposes of this budget, it actually is going to feel like a cost increase this year. 
Yeah, you need an explanation of that? Yes. <laughs> okay. I'll take them in reverse order. So, um, that's a, just break it into two parts. Most of the money that flows through is power supply related. That's what I'm talking to you about today. The other part is regulatory and administrative. That's where the cost of the renewable energy standard compliance is budgeted for. And so you're not seeing that today. H11 Solar was built primarily to serve the statutory requirements. It fulfills tier two of the renewable energy standard. And it will give you a surplus of renewable energy credits starting next year. So it is tangibly and in a different budget reducing your costs of compliance of a different part of that's budget. But it is an expensive resource through the lens of power supply by itself. So um, that $90, if you subtract out the value of the renewable energy credits that it's providing, is about half. $45 is what's left. And that makes it a very competitive resource given next year's energy prices. So it's a bit of a mixed message, you know, but I hope I know. So you have to look at it holistically. You do. Okay. And I'm coming yeah. here, unfortunately, with half of your budget. I don't. But, but even with, I'm looking at uh, chart number two. Mm -hmm. uh, well, jumping ahead. I know, but I, I'm but joking. It's, it's I'm joking. No, I'm t I, 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 I don't want to distract things. Cause, but we're paying nine cents in round numbers per kilowatt hour for H11. Our total load charge per kilowatt hour is 9.8 cents in the budget. For so we're less than the budget. So why is that driving up the cost? The last time I looked, if you average in something that's lower mm -hmm. than the average, it pulls down the average, not pushes it up. Good question. The uh, 9 cents in round numbers includes transmission and uh, administration. And that is not a helpful explanation, so give me a moment here, Lynn. Okay. Um, I, did, I did not go in and add the tr transmission and admin and then take that out of the No, you're just total. looking at the top line number. Uh, but I was, no, I was looking at the total load, you know, dollars per kilowatt hour. Um, I'm challenging myself to think top down because as the analyst, I built this up at the bottom and it's uh, as I described, but from the top down. So our transmission charges are half of what the resource charges are? Yes. Wow. Well, that would do it then. Yeah, transmission is yeah, if you a could, big, if you big could, part if of you, this. If you take out, if you basically cut the number in half, then yeah. Mm -hmm. So it's competitive with the RECs. But it's not going Which to is be, what we always thought. Which is what we want. It's not running on a high voltage line. This is being consumed locally, correct? Mm -hmm. So, okay. Well, that actually leads to a bunch of questions. I, but I, 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 sorry, go ahead. If you, if you look at just the 2022 budget and you take the resource charge, which is all the energy charges, leaving out transmission, well, except the transmission charges, we have to pay for all of the other energy for all the energy that we're bringing in. So the transmission charges do belong in there for comparison standpoint. Yeah, I go back to the same thing. If we've got something that's cheaper, how does it raise the average? If it's cheaper than the average, how does it? Because he's only talking about energy costs. He's talking about one perspective of this four-layer equation, basically, right? Yeah, the, the well, transmission costs, the way I view them, Lynn, are there Aren't energy They're costs? given. I can't avoid them in any way. And but you do avoid them with H11. Very little, but yes, a little bit. Yep. Well, um, I mean, they don't go beyond. I mean, at, at what point? Well, they don't go beyond the point where they get onto the high voltage, uh, like uh, Velco lines. So I don't understand how this trans their transmission costs for locally consumed power. Because the H11 doesn't peak when the state peaks or when New England peaks. But the four its peak power doesn't happen at the same time of day, let alone the same hour that it needs to. Okay, yeah. but right, but still as a okay. 
So your the peak load costs you're levelizing across all resources. That's one way to say it. Yes. Okay. But the real way they're accrued to Hardwick and every other utility is at one hour of the month, and it's always after six, seven p.m. Mm -hmm. And that's when H11 is near to nothing. When I look at the summary chart, I'm going to come back to this average because it's really <laughs> bugging me. It says. 2022 is up 4.8% from 2021. And I look at the bar chart, and the bar chart is the total. It's not, it's all of the pieces. And it would seem to me that H11 is contributing to the increase being smaller in that bar chart because it's everything than, than not. Because it's, it's but the uh, costs are still there. If if you take okay, let's do it this way. If you take the H if you take H eleven out, what does what is the increase? Well, I have a slide on this, so let's jump to it. Okay. Um, Did I, I missed it's the that last one. slide actually, slide three point three. <coughs> and if this isn't satisfactory, keep pressing and this is necessary. So in 2021, we expected this first bullet, and we expected H11 to be built about mid-year. And so we budgeted for half of its megawatt hours. And so that was a brand new resource, never existed before. It increased cost by you know, $95,000. That's the point of the first bullet. 2022, it's going to be in a place for the entire year. The uh, output will be roughly double. And so will the cost. And so the conclusion is, budget year compared to budget year, 21 versus 22, this is increasing by 127,000. Okay, now, because I have my question that I had written down before, the power, you've got the power supply budget is up 127,484 as a result. Doesn't something else go down as a result? Yes, oh, the right. cost of the renewable energy standard compliance will go down. But doesn't don't we purchase? Yeah, less. It fewer, just places purchase. Aren't we purchasing that twenty four hundred sixty six megawatt hours someplace else in the spot market? At, we are at a higher price. Uh, that you're correct up until that last. Statement. It's not in the spot market necessarily, is it? I mean, it's it's like day ahead or it's that's it's both. but that's still spot market. It is in the day ahead market. Uh, I would characterize that as a spot market yeah. as well. Um, not quite as spotty as the real time yeah, is. <laughs> necessarily high. But the, uh, the cost of electricity, even at these elevated prices in 2022, is still less than $90 on average. How much is it? Let's take a look. Um, 3. Where's my price slide? slide so 3. this is it, is this 3.2? Yeah, 3.2. So this is showing a monthly curve that's very spiky. So in January, no, prices are about where are you now? No, it's not, I'm in the wrong. Three point one. Put the back up. I think there's a three point zero. Now it's still three point one. So you couldn't paste it these last week. Either one of the three point ones. I like the one Lynn is looking at because it's, uh, it's there's less time involved. This one is easier to see. Just back one page. So you can see 2022's prices. They're going to peak out at today's forecast at uh, a little less than $160 a megawatt hour. That's for January. But as soon as you get into the summer period, prices are down around $40. So there's more $40 months than there are $160 months. And on average, I think the prices is probably, if I remember correctly, in the $70 a megawatt hour range. But aren't we selling more electricity in the uh, higher months? Because our air conditioning load isn't very high. I did not bring that chart with me, Lynn, but Hardwick's net long, meaning it has extra megawatt hours, there's a surplus in many months, so yeah. So, but I, this this is helpful seeing. So this is this is the day ahead, and what you're saying is the transmission doesn't really impact it very much. There are there. 
almost unrelated, not completely, but almost unrelated at this point, the solar production from the transmission. And then, and we're not looking at the net on the solar. We're just looking at the, just because the that's, that's a different place in the budget. Yes. Got it. Yeah, they split out the whole res business two years ago. Uh, and the budget was yeah. Yeah. because there was a lot of shuffling in between the members where we were helping, like, we sold a bunch for $130,000 a couple years ago. And that kind of got lost and buried in the regular monthly process. So they bumped that all out so we can track yeah. it there. I, what, what bothers me is it's a little bit misleading because it looks like the solar is more expensive than it is. I agree with you. I In this know. discussion, yeah. it is. But when you look at the whole pot, Right, but, but people... Understood. Look at that and say, how much does a kilowatt hour cost you? And how much does a kilowatt hour that isn't solar cost you? And you need to be talking net-net. Yes. Yeah, if we were in the context of the testimony that was written in support of the permit, much more holistic. And you, you would see your points coming through much more clearly than they do okay. in the budget. Thank you. So I have a series of questions, and I may be completely off base, but the, the prices I've seen, like on at NREL for a megawatt hour, have been in a long term contract in the range of 20 bucks a megawatt hour, 18 to 19. You know, in that range. And so, if we go to 3.3, this $90 dollars per megawatt hour, that's not like levelized capital cost, right? This is, that's actually the cost per megawatt hour. That's not the, the levelized cost over the... Over. It actually is exactly the levelized cost over the next 25 years. That price will not change. Uh, I mean, a, a levelized capital cost. I mean, these uh, aren't these aren't capital costs. Okay, that's what I'm trying to these, make make sure. These are not capital costs. These are energy costs. No, okay, that's what that's what I'm asking. That's what I'm yeah. asking. Okay, so and uh, so we signed a it's a PPA, 25 year PPA, with right. the developer, and that's what we pay the per kilowatt offer. per kilowatt hour. But we get all attributes from the facility. So that includes the lights, capacity, decreaser, if it was to line up, if it ever did. Everything we get. But he's only talking about the kilowatt hour piece. Okay. And, and this, may I add to that? Everything is exactly right, of course, Mike. But um, we've chosen, because that contract was written the way it was written, to express the capital costs in energy units. So it is a levelized cost, and it does include capital. As a matter of fact, the vast majority of that nine dollars is capital. Yes. Um, that's how I'm used to interpreting the, the purchase power agreements that we signed for solar. Sorry if that's confusing. Yeah, but the, those capital costs, those would be the concern of the, of the developer, not the, I mean. Right, we don't have that risk. It's right. all on the developer. Yeah. Okay, I got it. Quick question, the 2021 generating 1,617 megawatt hours. What, what, are, you, what are you looking uh, 3. at? 3.3, sorry. It helps. Yeah, 3.3, this is uh, 1,617 megawatt hours at 95,000. So that's $59, so this, does this include, this subtracts the attributes, the, the tier two attributes, because this is $59 a megawatt hour, and then 2022, it ends up being 90, He's 40, just doing the division. Oh, okay. 9049 <laughs> ends up being almost twice as much. Or, or ends up being 50% more. I mean, did I, is that correct? Or is that I think what I'm hearing is that I made a mistake. So I'm okay. the second yeah, bullet, that is the, the, run, the contract price, $90 and change. Okay. I, I ran it. Um, yeah, so the division in the bullet above is not, uh, well, the division's correct, the numbers aren't. It's the same contract. Okay, well, the price so, yeah. the, the price changes, I think, from year to year. No, it's level. Well, right? is it is it's it level less? Yeah. No, this is a reporting error on my part in the 2021 budget. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, you whittled that out of there. Okay. They wanted an increaser. What's the correct term? But there's term? this escalator. Escalator. Thank but you. But what happened? But there's um, what do you call it? 
the efficiency though is going down. That's all on them. Yeah. That's all on them. Okay. No, but we we can take the fifty nine dollars though, right? No, I'm kidding. Well, yeah. <laughs> if, no, I, if nothing happened this year. It's actually near to zero. Yeah, it's almost zero anyway. <laughs> I think it is commercial as of just a few days ago. Yep. Uh, yeah. Just in we, time for yeah. the cloudy weather. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Yeah. Rain, snow. Yeah. 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 Check my store out. Yeah. 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 The three first three days it was in service. We had nice sunny days. Yeah, they were. And yeah. this isn't a great time of year for solar. But, but it cranked out. Like happy with what Forty-five thousand kilowatt hours. I was like, wow, that's pretty good for this time of year. Lots of electrons. Yeah. <laughs> that's great. Am I not remembering something about transmission correctly? But I was expecting to see our transmission expenses start going down in the next few years. As soon as we close the deal with Morrisville, which is Ken and I and Penny, the manager there, are working that out. Uh, as soon as we sign that deal, pay them whatever okay. I get approved by all of you to pay them, then we'll start saving that 175000 a year. Good. But that'll just offset the larger transmission right. inflation. Correct. Yeah. So but it's a that'll great be, thing, but it's... Right. Well, what, is our, what is our Valco... An ISO cost at transmit, do you have a feel for that? In terms of this percent increase? total? No, like how many dollars a year? Oh, it's, it's combined, it's about a million dollars. Okay, yep. so we're dropping. So that goes up 10%. But we're going to drop We're going to drop X percent of that. Right. So you're going to offset. Over 10%, yeah. You're going to offset. Which is why we went down this road to begin with when he started telling us, or actually your predecessor started telling us about, hey, transmission is going to be doing this and that. And I was like, hmm, let's, let's do this then. Right, that's great. Good. And there's more we can do. You might recall we did a, a long range plan to yeah. see what you needed in the next 20 years. One of the things that uh, VEPSA is doing is we have a development partnership with a company called DeLorean Power. They develop utility scale battery projects, just as Encore Renewables develops these solar projects. Um, the economics are favorable. We can do something with a battery to offset your um, ISO Velco costs uh, with this development partnership. So you're talking about one one megawatt hour. In your case, it can be up to five ish, four or five ish. We'll have to optimize it against your load shape, but it, in theory can make you disappear from the grid for a few hours. Yeah, <laughs> then, we can, peak out. then we can avoid that peak hour and how the numbers are cost less right and, off. and how are they disposed of? Lithium ion chemistries are extremely long lived. These are 20, 30 plus. They'll all, their engineering life is longer than their economic life. Very long lived. Disposal is not, there's not yet a technology that recycles them, but the it is a a uh, area of research. Yeah, it depends on the chemistry. I mean, lithium iron, lithium ion, like cobalt. Basically, you have the you know problematic lithium iron phosphate, almost the same energy density. I mean, you know, and uh, many more cycles, completely discharge, um, much longer lived, and non, you know, they're they're non toxic. You know, it's lithium iron and. And, and they, they are so. toxic. What are you talking yeah. about? Yeah, you want to drink lithium? I don't. No, well, I mean, <laughs> it's toxic. They're, 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 lithium is, you know, it's a, it's a light. Lithium, it's a light the, metal. the whole issue, the whole environmental issue with, with, with batteries, with the conventional technologies, is disposal of them. And it's a huge yep. problem. And it's something that if we get to the point that we're going to have to weigh whether the savings is worth the environmental cost. That's right. Looks like Sean it. and Vepsa will address yeah. for us and report their assessment. <laughs> <laughs> but this is kind of a, an open door the way PCBs became just this, you know, mm -hmm. dick, you know, 50 year expense for utilities to get rid of them. You know? There was no technology to get rid of them. Well, and PCBs are a different, completely different animal. Kind of uh, understood, but it's the same principle. But, but yeah, yeah, yeah. Exactly. It's the same. Yeah, they're a legacy. A legacy yeah, well, that's that's a topic in any case yeah. for another yeah, day. Yeah, another discussion. Um, with the Energy Committee. Amongst others, no doubt. 
So, so can we look, I want to make sure we get the benefit of all of your slides yeah. and the right takeaway. Um, so where you show on slide two, the budget outlook, which is just, it's great as I think a board, we like to be able to see what the, you know, what, what's coming at us. And, and so this one, what is it, it shows us, you know, what, what, what would you have us take away? What are the Why don't we go through each one? Absolutely. Yeah. Maybe yeah. just go to the, the beginning. Go to the beginning and give us your take on the key thing. Make sure. Don't assume we're getting to the right point. <laughs> so slide one is is this year's budget to actual overview. It's September year to date. We'll very soon have October. Um, there's no rate pressure showing up this year that I can see. And we're far enough into the early winter where I can tell you if my disappointed skier sensibility we're having a warm entry point. <laughs> so that's good for power prices in your budget. Bad for my recreation. But um, I really don't see any surprises between now and the end of the year um, that would alter your budget from this trajectory. So, um, and, and to help us understand, so when H11 kicked in this month, we only had three days, but assuming we had more days or get more days, is that helping net net? You're, it's it's de minimus. In de minimus. November okay. and December, it's just not okay. crazy much. So, so it's late. We didn't get all what we were thought we'd get if it had started earlier, but it actually isn't a big plus or minus. Not no. this year. Okay. So, so, Bill, if you could recruit kids with brooms to pull the snow off the <laughs> There you go. This project, what C. Vince is already contributing. <laughs> I know a whole lot of Roll. Yeah, uh, yeah, it's it's not our plant. Yeah, yeah. Um, <laughs> that's always a problem. <laughs> Plus, okay. Mary, Sean, that's on the same page. It's just at the bottom. The, I was wondering if we'd be able to provide just the cost differential with, with if given 100% coverage versus what the actual coverage is. Yeah, so the difference that's between wherever the spot payments were and whatever. The, uh, you know the anticipated contract payments. Yeah. So, so we saved or we whatever. Everything's an oversimplification in power supply because you have 12 to 16 resources right. as I budget for them. But the major resource that's been out for a few months is Walcott Hydro, which for power supply purposes is free. It doesn't cost me anything. It hits the capital O and M budget. But that um, that's been out for two and a half, three months. Four? Five. Yeah, so that's most of the differential without me looking into the details. And so math is easy, you know, the market price of power is $50 a megawatt hour. So. Um, okay, okay. Just yeah. multiply. It's the market price is positive. <laughs> yeah. <It's> zero. So. <laughs> okay. There's other pluses and minuses in there, but that's probably one of the bigger ones. Uh, yeah. Okay, but you, you see what I'm saying? Seeing what the actual, it doesn't, it's not assigning any blame or anything. It's just getting it quantifying uh, what the difference would be. Yeah, and I would argue, Vince, what, you, what you're seeking, if I read your other slides right, what you're going to tell us, if we're reading right, is that we're going into an environment where this fossil fuel energy, mostly gas, is going to go through the roof at certain periods, and it's going to make the marginal coverage cost through the roof. That's very well said. And because yeah. we're seeing it in, like, in England, we were, a company has a plant in England, and we're just getting clobbered, like and hundreds should, of thousands of dollars. You should speak to the global yeah, yeah, piece of that, because that's legit. Yeah. 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 So, yeah. So, yeah, so help us, because I think that's the key. We're going to have to be, the penalty for being wrong now on that, being wrong under and having to buy more is going to be ferocious. It, it's going to be big. It's going to be bigger. But the fact that we had originally planned for a coverage as high as it was is what's giving us protection. A cushion, right now. A cushion from from that. So that as we look forward to this next year, that's where. And you, you're way ahead on this thing. I mean, you guys are probably already. Putting all these factors together. Didn't you have the dam in H11 right at that point? Yeah. So, yeah, I'll definitely dig into this yeah. in a moment. If I may return, 
you know, we plan for to have 5% more supply than we have demand this year. That's 105% coverage ratio see here on the left. Um, so what happened? H11 didn't show up. That's about half of the 5%. And walkit has been out for five months. I think that's the biggest part of the other 5%. So we're still within the range of, of what I strive for. BEPSA has a policy that is quite literally plus or minus 5%. Every month, we got to go in, in within that range. And um, we miss. You know, There's a lot of uncertainty in the world. But over the course of the year, it does average out. And we're, get into this target range. So actually, here's another question about, I was thinking about the output of H11. And you're using historical meteorological data. Do you know what the variances are? You know, uh, the possible error? I do. The, so this has been the driest four month period in the 30 year data set that I have for all the hydros of Northern Vermont. So. You were asking about H11. H11. Oh, I'm sorry. So, yeah, but at, you know, so, the look at applies too, but H11. Anyway, I lost the thread. My mind went somewhere else. Okay, like you uh, the question. The what type of variance? Oh, yes, uh, yes, for, yes. For you know, for in, insulation. I have so the number one data set I get is from the National Renewable Energy Lab, you right. and it's very detailed. It's out away for an entire year. Um, so I have a strong sense of the variance through that data set. Um, it's a typical meteorological year, so they're using actual data kind of all spliced together from a 30-year history. Um, but I'm budgeting averages on a monthly basis, so I'm losing a lot of that detail here. Now, when you bring it back to my daily job instead of my monthly annual one, we look at yesterday's actual solar and hydro production as well as a daily forecast of your load and net the two before we go to the day-ahead spot market and say, give me that enough. But, but also, H11, and, and maybe my recollection is, is wrong, is will be, if, it were, if it's running full year at average solar, we're still talking about less than 5%. <coughs> What percent? Less than ten percent. Yeah, it's like five or six percent. Um, I mean, I, I was I was just doing a back of the envelope at at, at one point six megawatts and point one seven is because I that's yeah. that's, 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 my head. that's what I do. And yeah. I come up with twenty three eighty three, and I'm looking at thirty seven thousand plus. It it it. It's a small percentage to begin with, and then so the variance yeah, is yeah. not going to make right. a whole lot right. of difference. But then the question is, could it make a lot of difference in some of the new environment we might be going into? Especially with more... The more, variance? With no. More. The whole piece of the pie? Yeah. A little. With more okay. solar <laughs> but, coming but, in now. But, all, but mainly if summer prices were higher. Yeah. If we, had, if we were hitting high summer prices, then the benefit would be bigger yeah. because there's more yeah. solar output during the summer yeah. months. Yeah. And if we if we have a dry winter, I hope we don't, um, because that'll have all kinds of other effects. Yeah. And the panels are clear. Yeah. Then clear. then we'll get more in the winter, and that would offset. So it it, it just. Yep. Yeah. Just depends. Okay. And our actual not nothing to do with ISO or. Month, but our system peak is on the coldest Sunday of the winter between 6 o'clock and 8 30 at night. Somewhere. Mm -hmm. I, I know this is for no, I don't think anybody people. else yeah. peaks then except yeah. us. <laughs> and, I, and I know this is a discussion for another time, but really, the, at some point, um, we find out like how many commercial customers there are, what potential there is for demand side control. That could offset that. I don't know if there probably aren't places running 24 hours a day or two shifts at that time. You were know, talking about Jasper Hill having a big generator that can get gone or something. Should we keep on with the slides? So, slide two is just a bar chart. It gives you a little bit of a feel. Look, the load is starting to grow, that blue line there. That has been a long-standing source of uncertainty. That 500 heat pumps that somebody was joking about earlier, 
we're going to have to watch and see if those kind of events take place. They, they can. I used to work for a plant, Summerside Electric, a uh, municipality in Prince Edward Island, and it happens. You know, you get these step changes in load because people wholesale will adopt. Um, and, and having control yeah. so that you have alternating on off between. Yeah. But stay steps. with the current environment where we don't have control. That's yeah. why yeah. as we go toward 2022, my recollection of budgeting last year is that you really need Mike to make sure you know our new customers or our new expansions with customers and all the components and then the new the new solar mm -hmm. residential solar or the new the variables yep we, you, you need to because you need a really good account yeah that's your good knowledge yeah. right yeah. and that accounting isn't just on the load side hardwick has many 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 net metered solar customers right. And that accounting is actually the more challenging okay. part of this. <laughs> so, yes. so are you feeling? Are you feeling like for this year's go round because you're like so. you you got what you need or you oh, yeah. make up? Because it felt like last year. It felt like last year as we were going through it, there were a few. Oh yeah, but we missed one or we missed another. So that's always the case. Yeah. You know this from a pure data perspective. There's many, many thousands of yeah. data points in here. Um, because we're not designing rockets and space stations, I don't yeah. go to perfection. So, but the macro trends last year were all about COVID. Uh, right, and those were so hard to assess. Right. But no, I was, but, yeah. I was more speaking to the changes in the customer base. Yeah. So the, we the, get new and I'm talking an 80-20 rule. Like the, mm -hmm. the, they're probably, you know, if Mike used his toes and his hand and his fingers, <laughs> there's probably like 20 things out there that change that you could. Build. I would say a dozen. Yeah. Or a dozen, yeah. dozen yeah. that he needs. So to the key is we got to make sure you really. Know but you had mentioned, for example, one customer. Oh yeah, he, he'll hear yeah. all about that. Yep. But as long as we're on that topic, because <clears throat> I was looking at the total kilowatt hours on two, which I guess is the detail behind the bar chart. And it seemed odd to me, unless there's, but maybe there's some underlying thing going on, that the budgeted kilowatt hours for 2022 are essentially the same as what they were, what the actual was in 2020, and 2020 was mostly COVID. And, and so I would have expected, all other things being equal, that 2022 would be more I, yeah. than so COVID affected your customer classes differently. Your residential customers, as a rule, use a lot more. Yeah. And your commercials. And we are we're definitely residential. Okay. percent residential. Yeah. So, so th this is why I'm coming to you. Well, yeah. Last year it didn't happen early enough. But this year, many of the BEPS utilities will have this discussion and say, you know, my gut tells me that load's going to be a little higher than this, Sean. I want you to add a percent or two. Yeah. And that's within, I can't, my algorithms aren't that accurate. Right. But, <laughs> but you're spread across 13, so we really, yep. but, but and maybe I've tapped the wrong takeaway, but my sense is that guessing low, guessing low will have a bigger penalty potentially this next year than any past year. So we're better off erring high. And that's, it's that's... really, the only person who's got it is Mike. You know, Mike's the one who's got it take stock of everything, feed it to you, and then say, and after all that, I still think, Sean, you ought to go high by X percent. And I just, as a board member, I really worry about it, because I have these inputs of saying, what's happening in Europe, and what's mm -hmm. happening when you're low, and shit, we didn't sign our contracts, so we've got a huge chunk that's, that's market spot, and we're just getting killed. And it's, some of it was outside our control, and some of it was inside our control. We blew the part that was inside our control. That's, that's, I, I, I agree with, with you, Roger, and that's, that's why it strikes me that we may want to project more load because the cost of being wrong is, is, uh, yeah. is, well, is going to be so high. What are the downsides of, of having, having more supply? Yeah, so, um, can you hold that for a moment? Yeah. I've got a yeah. reasonably crisp answer, but I want to give you a process. Yes answer Roger because the process of setting the budget is uh, 
sitting side by side with the process of hedging your load on a monthly basis. So this is a monthly outlook for an entire year. I welcome these adjustments. I, it's, that's the direction I would go to. Um, but even if you left the budget alone, VEPSA every single month meets uh, the last week of the month to look at the most recent month's actuals, demand, supply, all of it, peak load, and then look a month ahead because we have a power supply policy that is approved by our board and is this rock solid risk management. We have to do our best to get between 95 and 105. So from a process perspective, we could leave the budget alone and we're still going to put our thumb as power supply professionals on, this is judgment, onto the scale of demand. Are you running high this year? Yes. Okay. Johnson, for instance, we thought the college was going to go away a year ago. Right. And didn't, and their loads are much, much, much higher than the budget. So yes. I'm just putting my thumb on that scale. That's an outside Good. example. But um, please don't be too concerned about um, having supply and demand out of balance in your budget because we're looking at a monthly month ahead to get it as close as we possibly can get it. Okay. Um, but but from, a, from an overall budgeting standpoint, it the, annual, you accurate numbers. the annual, no, the annual budget comes yeah. in, into play. Mm -hmm. And if we're under budgeting, and, and it goes to the conclusion also of whether there's likely rate pressure and whether we need to be thinking about, about that. So. Does your calculus allow you in a certain environment where there's a big pre potential premium to say, no, our policy is shifting from 95 to 105 to 97 to you know, where you sort of say, we're not going to go plus 5, minus 5%. We're going to go plus 7, minus 3%. Or we're going we're to try to pull it up because the cost. It, you're describing our meetings rather well. Right. We, we're disciplined about staying between 95 and 105. But when we get into a real year like this one, where the hydro is dry as a bone and mole gets out, we, we adopt a, a different methodology. We say, hey, this, this is a two standard deviation year. That hydro is not showing up. So I, I have to buy you a much more power than you wouldn't have otherwise had. That's part of the calculus. Yeah. H11 obviously was not alone. Yeah. Northfield's solar plant was also late. Um, so we've got load, we've got supply. We look at the wood supply of McNeil, actually. Every, everybody who owns McNeil, uh, that's a big part of the discussion. How's McNeil going to show up this month? <laughs> yeah. Right, we're going to buy fuel this month. Well, there's, there's yeah. the, we're going to start putting segues in here, so I'll plant this one. You know, everybody who owns our peaking plant, Project 10, that's oil, fire, yeah. number two, diesel. And we've had active discussions about buying diesel ahead of time. Now, our tanks are full, yeah. but that's only two days supply at best. So you got to have a lot of trucks coming in to fill that up if you have a week long cold snap. Yeah. So you're time just buying futures. Exactly. You enter a free buy range with your fuel dealer. Yeah. So, uh, great. So, when I, when I joined. No, great, great. This is really good for us yeah. to understand. When I joined Hardwick Electric, that percentage was 85 to 115. Wow, what a difference. And that scared me. And I actually initiated this conversation yeah. with the board that got us to 95, 105. Yeah. And then what we're saying now is maybe this is a time frame of being a little bit asymmetrical. Oh yeah, this if you know meteorology comes into this too. But if we're in that week between Christmas and New Year's this year, and January is legitimately cold, you get it's a tough decision. We're probably going to buy to the 105 level just to make sure we're not short. Mm -hmm. That's going to come at a premium because yes. everybody knows it's going to be cold. Yeah. <laughs> but. Now let's try and shift to your question. What are the benefits of being having surplus versus deficit power? The answer is it depends entirely on whether the price is higher or lower than you expected. It's, it's a very simple quadrant analysis and it's symmetrical with a bias. So it's indeterminate whether or not being long is beneficial. If I buy that $160 power for January and it turns out warm, I'm going to lose money on that purchase. Yeah. Um, so that's the downside. Uh, unless <coughs> you, can, uh, you can resell it, correct? Well, I'll be right. forced you to resell, resell it. Resell it lower level. Yeah. yeah. But it is asymmetric in the sense that you can't lose any more money than zero. The market price won't go low. Well, in 
power markets that can be negative, but <laughs> let's ignore that for a moment. Um, the, the, the risk on the upside is almost unlimited. As Texas showed us, you can get multi-thousand dollar pricing for a week. Yeah. Yeah. Um, well, that, that's, 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 so that's, the, that's, 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 yeah. that's the thing. And that's, that's a different, and that's, different structure. Given what's happening with oil prices and what's happening in the LNG market, which is really the, more the driver, I think, I wonder the same thing that Roger is, is talking, whether we should be somewhat asymmetric and at least going into the winter. And yes, we may overpay somewhat. Yeah, so but I've talked you through, Lynn, the how do I characterize this? Project 10 produces so little megawatt hours in the year that most months I ignore it. It's not going to run. Yeah. No. But I pay close attention to it July and January, or that stereotypical month where you know there's something funny going on, you need it there. So I've got choices actually. We can get ourselves to that 105% through market purchases. That's kind of plan A typically. But plan B, and it, it's an attractive plan B, is to pre-buy the futures contract on oil or at least get a rock-solid trucking contract in so you're going to have the oil. Project 10 is a big plan, 40 megawatts. What, what is the, what's the capacity ratio on that? The capacity, how much does it run based on, uh, it's, as it's opposed to capacity? 40, oh, its capacity factor is a fraction of 1% on an annual is basis. Is that right? Yeah, it's just but when it's running, it's running full right. out. It's just right. a peaker, right? Okay. So if we can keep it fueled, Where, you know, oh. it's a yeah. huge resource and it's a tremendous hedge. Even though that resource costs us three hundred dollars a megawatt hour, <laughs> very expensive. Yeah. If it's a three thousand dollar megawatt hour market, he ha, that's yeah. we're, we're golden. So there's a reason peaking points exist. <laughs> so you're not as um, Exposed as you may think you are, as long as we do a good job of lining up your oil supply. Where is where is that project? Swanton. It's in Swanton. Yeah. It's, that's that's Swanton. Okay. Sure. So we're, we're, we're trucking contract and we need clear roads. And it's tied in to the basic stuff. <laughs> high gate. Goes into the Highgate bus, Melco Highgate. Yeah. So I mean, this is an aside, but I heard that's like there's some constriction at Highgate, some capacity constriction or restriction at Highgate. Possibly. If you had a sunny, windy winter day, the Shi'i interface could potentially constrain. Well, the interface will constrain, but they typically curtail the wind. Uh, okay. That's, that's, that's Sheffield and King of yeah. Community wind first. Right, but that's not. Highgate's limited by the converter. Okay. <clears throat> so Bedford, Quebec, across the border, has quite a bit of transmission capacity, but the converter can only take 225 oh, megawatts. Right. I guess it. you're talking about. Yeah. Yeah. Sean, weren't we um, going to consider, and maybe you still are considering, uh, some long, more extending the long-term contract with Seabrook? Yes, so we priced things out late summer, early fall, and ran headlong into the headlines we're talking around here, liquefied natural gas being very, very expensive. And we chose not to um, purchase in the future. So the Seabrook contract lasts one more year. And NextEra is a willing seller, as we've talked about. Um, they like to market a blend and extend strategy under these circumstances. Say, hey, your price is really low this last year of the contract. The very next year is really high. Let's average the two and get <laughs> Yeah. You know, I bet they would. Let's make your <laughs> books look better. We're looking at it, but it doesn't feel okay. well. I'm gonna, I'm gonna show you all my cards in a moment. I don't believe this winter's pricing. So you don't believe what? I don't believe this winter's price forecast will come true. <laughs> That's a rather bold. Yes. All right, I can't tell the future, but I'll tell you why. I'm so you don't think it'll be as bad as some of the forward views? I don't think it can be from a physical fundamental perspective. The, so let's talk next era. They have, this is a big international company, they brought their subject matter expert who's got a team of 12 analysts that do amazing work. And by their accounting of the weather, the typical New England winter has 12 really cold days. And you've got 150 days through the winter, November to March. 
So it's actually a small percentage of days that you're planning for. And it's, okay, 12 could be 24 if it's a cold winter. But it's not just the number of cold days, it's how they sequence in together. It's the cold snap that is the risk. Um, very, very analogous to Texas. Texas had a streak of cold weather that just pushed that system over the limit last February. That same thing, unfortunately, can't happen here. If we get a um, three to five day cold snap, the natural gas infrastructure can't supply the power plants. It's that uh, simple. Yeah. And historically, liquefied natural gas comes in through Boston Harbor and supplies the marginal molecules. That's where it comes from. But this year, Europe wants those molecules rather badly. They didn't fill up their storage over the summer thanks to some games with Russia. And Texas and Louisiana's export capacity is growing. It's grown into the, they're exporting 10% of our supply in this continent every day. So and in a few more years, they'll be exporting 20%. So you're saying ISO is going below the 120%? Mark, uh, yeah, that's- They are? Their reserve margin is fine, but their winter fuel security is not fine. Gordon Van Wiley, the CEO of Iceland, has been saying this reserve, every place. Reserve, reserve margin's capacity. It's right, right, right. Capacity. It's not, it's, right. Yeah, 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 it's right, not right, energy. Right. Yeah, 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 right. yeah, yeah. Thank you. Yeah, okay. And those are all. Well, like what percentage are like the the closed cycle turf gas? You know, what percentage? There's about ten thousand. So. The entire base of installed generation in New England, somewhere in the neighborhood of 30, 33,000 megawatts of generation capacity. We only peak in the mid 20s in the summer and typically less in the winter. But um, to answer your question, the combined cycle fleet's about 10 or 12,000 megawatt hours. And it's a subset of that that right. doesn't have pipeline space when it's cold. So can you close the loop on that LNG global driving costs? Yeah, so nine months out of the year, the price in North America is very low. I think $5 a minimum BTU. That fits within the realm of historical averages. Europe and Asia are competing for our liquefied natural gas, and they're paying $25 to $30 a minimum BTU, factor of five and six. And when Boston Harbor is bidding against that for a ship that could cross the pond or not, um, you have a five-fold increase at the margin of what you're going to pay for natural gas in the winter. That's, that's the problem we face in the winter. And we're only going to face it for a week or two, given that 12 days right. and how it stacks up. Um, so could we have a cold snap? Yeah, but it's not going to happen December and January, <laughs> February and March. It's not the way the climate works, in my opinion. So markets are a little overheated, in my opinion. And uh, we'll be prepared every month going in and every week, frankly. One of the modifications we suggest to the board at VEPSO was let's shift this policy that we have for hedging to every Friday. Just keep that close an eye on it so that uh, we're not buying four weeks of power and we only need one or two. And then this is going to go way up heat pumps and electric cars. Yeah, that's an interesting discussion all by itself. All right. Elevated prices will drive people to do more of that. I'm, I'm one of them. <laughs> My HVAC contractor and I have talked. Yeah, yeah nice. Hmm. Yeah, what's uh, critical, Mike, is that uh, if, if, it's not if, when all these new demands for electricity come in, the critical piece is that we get time of day capability. Yeah. So we can uh, push that yeah. away from peak. Your yeah. time, or we'll get time killed. and all that is great. Yeah. I mean, so another well, component Although it's, now, fair, it's, not as it's not all that elastic, at least historically, with time of use pricing, it's it's um, it makes it over time it will make a difference, but it, it because people's capital people's electric using using stock is lumpy, and it comes in. Yeah, and it's it's just an incentive too. It's not a you don't have real control. I mean, time of use. Well, it'd be well, interesting policy decisions to make. Yeah. Well, you do have. You have different okay. rates. So right, you, you have want to rates. use it when the price is high, that's fine with us. That's what I'm saying. It's just an incentive. And so, like you are saying, Lynn, over, over time and education. It's, it's, it's not just education. If you have, in somebody's house, in somebody's factory, they have a certain 
they have a certain set of equipment. Right. And it's going to use a certain amount of electricity. And until they make changes in that stock or in, fat, in facilities that will alter the use in response to varying prices, the fact that they're subject to varying prices isn't going to have yeah, right. as but much. Yeah, right. they change their work pattern. But car, car charging is made for it. Car yeah. charging yeah. is perfect for it. And you can, you can control the charger so that the man's never going to be above a certain amount. Well, the control thing's another. On, on this. That is a, we, would, we would target different rates at different times. Yeah. Like, on this ta I, table two, when I'm looking beyond 2022, and I'm seeing those coverage ratios much lower. That's this is where we've got to start be start looking, and sooner rather than later because we're already just about to 2022. Mm -hmm. so yeah, there's just, two things going on. Right? 2023, the next era contract drops off. That's big. We replaced yeah. a part of it through Brookfield a year ago, right. and, uh, and then mid year 2024, we have some shorter term contracts with EDF uh, out of Houston. That, are, are dropping off. And so, yeah, we're actively, you know, it's not a bad time to buy summer power. That could be where management lands at BEPSA here in the coming months. I think he wants to wait till the winter plays out a bit because I think he agrees with my assessment. If the weather's not going to come in cold four months in a row. So if we come out of the winter with a normal storage level and things have settled down, I will at least buy the summertime power because uh, it's, when you look at those price curves, those troughs are within historical averages. They're not going to drive any rates up or down a lot. The wintertime power may be a tough, tough problem for years. We'll have to see how that works out. One of the other factors in the Seabrook, the second half of the Seabrook replacement, is what? that the second half of the Seabrook power contract replacement. We did the half and left the half. And one of the other components of leaving the half is that there's still an unknown in Vermont as to whether or not that energy is going to be considered renewable, renewable anymore, which will change the price and the racks and everything else. So that, that's another old mm. piece of that puzzle that we're holding off on to wait for the legislature to make a decision. That Where do you think that's going to go? Yeah. What's Energy your policy on? this winter is going to be um, up in the air. We'll see. <laughs> Interesting. For, for Vermont, it's, there's a lot going on with the climate council. I think we don't know, and Ken Nolan is saying we're going to wait and see before we sign on that. Dog okay. Wow. Can, can, so that's uh, a big. That's a big part of our equation. Yeah. Can I, I can I follow up with you about or are you Mike about whatever the decision making process is for that? Just want to find out. What's, it, what's, what's your question? Of what? Uh, the, uh, whether or not it's going to be considered renewable. You'll all hear Does that. It, who, who the players are, you know, who's making the decision. It's the legislature. Yeah. yeah. It's, it's the legislature. It's, it's, yeah. God help us. Who is this being played? Sorry. <laughs> I'll say it. God help us. a rational decision. <laughs> and we're having a meeting, right, with our legislators. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, there's some new faces and leadership positions. Uh, and you're gonna, you're gonna yeah. uh, Next so, slide. Yeah, three point one. Uh, we covered. What happened to two? Three point one. The long-term trend you saw back in January. I put this in for context. You might remember how long we've been on a down. What so, happened to this one? That we're looking we, at we, 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 we were on that one. Oh, okay. did I? Yeah, all yeah, we're turning to it, so I keep looking at <laughs> <in> my right <laughs> here. Can you make this go backwards, Mike? Well, we didn't talk about it, did we? Slide two is, is mostly about transmission to me. That is the growing item in that uh, outlook uh, more than any. So battery recycling, life cycle cost notwithstanding, the solution to that is, is storage um, or you know, any load management you can do, that's that's the solution. We should, I should acknowledge that transmission policy could easily shift finally in the coming few years. Um, allocating so much cost on one hour a month is creating winners and losers. <laughs> and there is some pressure uh, at ISO to change things up at first. That's 
once a decade, once a 20 year process, it doesn't happen much. But. Well, I mean, you don't, you know, you, you flatten that, that peak, you don't have to have an additional peaker with an additional demand, for example. You don't have to have additional transmission lines. I mean, there are just so many savings yeah. just pulling that, those peaks down. And then the total load, which, you know, Lynn asked some good questions about, you know, it's forecast to go up, but not, not really fast. And I've been looking at these curves for a long time. I'm mindful that a spike in fossil prices could drive electric loads up quicker than this. So that's the other part of the equation I want to keep mm -hmm. an eye on as we step through the years here. Mm -hmm. um, and anecdotal evidence frequently is the first indication. You know, new construction or big retrofits, you just have to watch. Pricing, you know, just we're just coming off of a 15 year low and um, we'll manage through this period just like we've managed through past periods. But that polar vortex sticks in people's memories, you know, that 2014 cold snap. Mm -hmm. We don't want to see one this winter. Uh, if we do, we would expect some pretty high prices. Mm -hmm. Just gave you a news article here to give you some context. That's not just me talking. Yeah. Uh, the transmission chart is much the same as you saw in January. Um, transmission operates on a six month lag most years, so the 10% boost you're seeing in 2021 here is actually showing up for you in 2022 in terms of budgeting. Uh, it's forecast to moderate a little bit, but Ken Nolan will tell you he doesn't believe that forecast either. <laughs> New England has proposed many gigawatts of offshore wind, which requires a lot of transmission expansion at some point. So mm -hmm. that is in our near term. Now, does um, does some of the federal money come in, mix in here, and help these <laughs> things? Well, I mean, it'll it'll yeah. have to get paid for eventually somewhere, but. There's a talented executive at Belco named Kara yeah. Johnson who was very successful 10 years ago in bringing in the money for AMI. Yeah. He's already ramping up a team with University of Vermont PhDs and others to get that grant money, bring it here for that purpose. So, And that could help us keep the 7% a year. That's the concept. Yeah. It's, and Kara's yeah. the best at what he does. He knows everybody. He awesome. is a real dealer. <laughs> He's a real dealer. <laughs> He's very, very good and very entertaining. So that's transmission, 3.3 is H11. Um, the only thing to forecast for you is to put a finer point on policy change. It has been a <coughs> desire of some to double the tier two cost, tier two requirements in the renewable energy standards. So you may need another solar at some, some point to mm -hmm. meet a requirement like that if it changes. Uh, but you are overbuilt against the current standard. You're fine, but right. policy changes. That's where we want to be. Yeah. This is terrific. Does anyone else have any questions? Any other uh, questions? Sean, that was excellent. Yes, thank you. How is it possible to have you all? Thank you. How is it possible, Sean, that we've gone all these 10 or 11 years without a price increase for our residential customers? I mean, every, all the prices have been going up, and we still don't charge anymore. You got an answer to that weird question? It's happened multiple times in my career. Burlington Electric went through a phase like that where it's 10 years. There are also um, other MEPSA members that have gone similar periods. What, it tends to be a combination of things. There's not one answer. But what I tend to see is the rate case that does happen 10 years ago was at a relatively high point in terms of power prices, and things came off from there. So you, you get a, a front end of a, a beneficial cycle. But then the rest of it's management. You've got to manage your capital budget. And, um, mm -hmm. you know. And Mike has been finding those projects. Well, municipals are frugal, you know. You, it's a very different incentive structure at a municipal or a cooperative than it is versus a Green Mountain Power. Green Mountain Power wants to grow their capital budget because that's how they make money. So um, municipalities frequently beat the investor owns on this game. And, and their rates reflect it. They're lower. Yeah. That's good. Well, they are right now. There have been periods of time when we've been higher than the Greenhouse Tower. For the, exactly the reason that we're talking about. Keep it going. Well, and, and for also when we went in, probably the prices were much higher. You know, and I think we should feel good about 
not having an increase, but in absolute terms, you know, if you go across the lake to Plattsburgh, what they pay for power in Plattsburgh compared to what we pay in Vermont is pretty different. What is it? Is it higher? Lower, I think. Lower. For an industrial plant, a plastics processor, five cents a kilowatt hour. But, it from like high, but high that's high because high. of Niagara Mohawk. Oh. So we, you'll see that little block, we get a, a piece of that power. Our first 100 kilowatt hours for every customer is only six cents a kilowatt hour. Yeah. That's the and that's, a, that's not just the power cost, that's the user at the end. That's user, right, user's that's total right. Bill. Yeah, so. Uh, so it's a hell of an economic yeah. development incentive. It's tough for the plastic plants. Yeah, it not is. is. And Global Foundry. Where do you want to be? That or, you know, New yeah. York. For, for an electric intensive. As an anecdote, we paid three and a half cents a kilowatt hour in Washington. And they had a big paper. But plant. you've got you've got a huge amount of exactly. Yeah. You've yeah. got you've got Is all it, the all the. Yeah. So that was your net net bill. Three and a half cents a kilowatt hour, and it's wow. a county owned hydro dam. It's not even that big. It's just there are only five thousand people in the county. But but they're also getting from from uh, Bonneville. Bonneville, Seattle City Lights. But no, this is actually it's the it's the local uh, PUD public utility district. Did that, uh, but I'm just saying that as an anecdote. I'm not, yeah. So we're not setting any records for low cost, but we are doing awesomely well for yeah. the region. Keep yeah. it a little. Thank you, Sean. Did that main blurb in the paper I sent you spark any thoughts to share? Or no? Well, yeah, this is about policy. You, Mike sent me a uh, newspaper article that said main utility rates are going up 60%. When the other five New England states went retail competitive. They basically said, hey, customers, you're on your own. And most customers only buy a year ahead, maybe two. So their prices swing by these big, big double-digit margins when events like this happen. And then yeah. Vermont chose a different path. Yeah. Vermont didn't do that. Oh, so that article, same thing, but the, the effect there is the, the article. Yeah. It's the same okay. liquefied natural gas issue drops yep. at 60%. Yep. And that was the story I was relating personally now what we're dealing with in England is our fault. Yeah. <laughs> we just didn't buy forward at the right yeah. time. Yeah, now we're in the top, market. I don't understand why you're, the whole continent made a mistake. You're yeah. short on gas. Now we're in the market. <laughs> <laughs> you didn't get the pipeline. No, and then you've got to deal with Russia. Hmm. Thank you, everybody. Thank you very much, sir. Thank you. Very clear. Happy so I have one more question, Sean. Uh, are any of the other BEPSA members, because I know it gets talked about kind of two, three times a year about your, your specific ratios, and if hard to decided that they, you know, Sean's full of baloney, we want to do this and have this shifted center, we can do that, right? We just got to tell you we want you to be X and Y parameter. Yeah, it has to be in writing. That's all. The policy is very clear. It's actually very short. It's a little cut two sentences. Yeah. Yeah. Here's the range, and if you want to deviate from it, tell the general manager in writing. Right. <laughs> I wouldn't have said that, that, that it's baloney. I would have said we're more nervous. <laughs> <laughs> Nobody has exercised that in the three years I've been there. Um, right. I, I just share that because no, if right. you were to decide that, I didn't it's know not we could hard. Do. Yeah, I, I, I was assuming we had to push up to do it for all 13. Now, we're pretty proactive. The extreme case this year was Swanton. There was no water in that dam, and that's 60, 70 percent of their supply. Mm. We bought power all summer long <laughs> and eventually bought a four-month block of it to uh, balance them out. And yeah, They also got skewed because they have a massive, it was the biggest rubber dam in North America back in the day. It's a 16-foot rubber dam on top of a concrete dam they inflate, <coughs> and then when you want to let trees or debris go, already deflate it a little bit and pump it back up. There's actually a decompression room you go into, decompress, and you can walk right out <laughs> inside the dam. It's pretty cool. Oh, wow. Cool. But that thing ripped on the bottom, so they, oh, had to, oh, gosh. they had to shut it down for how long? It was a better part of the year. Yeah, that messed them up big time. Before, before you, Michael, did you have any questions for Sean? Thanks for the holiday wishes and say for everybody have a good holiday. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Sean. Very informative. <laughs>
Ah, there's my notes. Is it me or is it cold in here? Yeah, it's cold. But, but I'm a southerner, so I'm probably... Back. No, I was about to put my jacket on. I'm back probably not a good reference point for that. Get cold snaps coming already right here. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. What do you have one shirt on, though, Mike? God. Well, I got a whole story if you want to hear it. Yeah. Is that a yes? Yes. <laughs> so I, I made the trek up to hunting camp this weekend in Brunswick, Vermont. I don't know if you know where that is. There's not, no, very not much up there. Know where Island Pond is? Oh, yeah, yeah sure. Get the Island Pond and go all the way to the Connecticut <laughs> River. <basically>. Wow! <laughs> Avery's Gore. So I get up at 5 o'clock in the morning, make everybody breakfast, and we all head out. I'm sure. We have a hill behind camp. We call it Heart Attack Hill because it's like 40 degrees. Mm. For about a half a mile, and we hunt up there. So I hike all the way up there, I'm dying, get up to my spot, and the sun is just starting to peak up in the distance, and I'm all hot and sweaty, and I'm in a t shirt. I have my shoulder bag and my jacket and hat and everything are tucked over that. So I take my shoulder bag off to get my jacket and hat and gloves and all that. They're gone. <laughs> I what? dropped them somewhere on the way up there in the dark. Oh, oh my gosh. So they dropped on the grass? I dropped them. And now I'm where I want to be. I don't want to be tromping around. So I sat there for three and a half hours. For shivering. Sure. <laughs> oh, <laughs> my God. Yeah, yeah I ate everything I had. You know, I'm like, don't move. The sun's going to see you. But I'm trying to be warm. Anyway, I, I, I found my stuff and everything was fine. I sat there for three and a half hours and I was frozen. <clears throat> Okay, so the next item on the agenda is meeting Beth. Meet Beth. Hi Beth. Hi. <laughs> um, and, and we have the monthly financials and I don't if people have any questions. I have a, a comment that, that, that I'd like to share on behalf of it myself, and it maybe you guys can decide if it reflects your view too. And I'm imagining it mirrors exactly what Mike has already said to Beth, and that is, you know, you coming on board is just a huge opportunity for for you and Mike to look at, you know, how everything is presented, analyzed. You've already done it. You got to run and start for for. The systems and how the numbers are coming together, but then when it comes to presenting, both presenting for Mike to manage and then presenting for us to understand, um, we're really, um, I think it's fair to say, you know, the way it's presented now is there's nothing sacred in there. There may be some compliance things where Mike has said, you know, well, we got to have it this way, but largely from our level, I think we're, we don't want to miss the opportunity you coming on to say, wow, I've seen it done this way, or I've seen the columns look like this and the rows look like that, or how about if we do a trend graph of this item? And so we're really, we really love to have you do it. And the, the only thing to caution I make is I know when you come on board in a new job, the worst thing you can do is like have the attitude, I'm going to change everything. Mm -hmm. You know, you want to respect what's there. But at least from our standpoint, I think, we don't want to miss the opportunity for you to make us better. Um, and the, the budgeting is a great opportunity. The monthly package is a good opportunity. And, uh, and my one bias is I'd love to see slides that are simple, summary level. Like I call them with managers, ding dong school slides where there, is, there aren't too many numbers on the page, and they just they get to the few simple things, and you can see the trend, and you can see, and then behind them, you peel the onion back, and you get progressively more detail. Mm -hmm. and, and the budgeting, that's really good, you know, sort of at the top level. Mm -hmm. This is the simple view, and here's a little bit more detail and a little bit more. Um, so they'll stop talking, you know, <laughs> Lynn or others. I, I, I agree. 
and a mic is that consistent because ultimately I, I, I actually charged that to come in here and ask you that exact question oh great <laughs> you're telling me this but my, my plan was to ask you yeah, that's right <laughs> tell me um, yeah so my I would think okay this is what you typically see yeah um, what do you like what do you don't what what do you not like is some of this very pertinent to what you look at do some of it you look at go yeah yeah what I so it's these these are your reports I mean it's our data but it's your reports for your purview so we I need to know what you want to see and I'm for me a baseline would be okay take what we have here say yeah or nay but then also come back and say what are we not giving you yeah. that you want to see because yeah. I can make anything you want it yeah. to look like. I, I, right. I think the point though that Roger was making is you've seen a wider range yeah. of how this kind of information is presented yeah. and in your experience, there may be some ways that you found people find more useful than other mm -hmm. ways. And if there are ways to do this that are typically more useful than the way we've got it, yeah. we'd like to hear about that. We'd okay. like to see what it looks like. And we may see it and say, gee, that's terrific. Or we may see it and say, oh, we kind of like the old better. way. <laughs> yeah, sure. Try yeah. it out the way I think of it. You're the thought leader. You know, okay. of, of all of us in terms of financial presentation and numbers and analytics and you know your mic's right arm to say this is the right way this is the best practice way this is the best way okay. to look at this from my standpoint I'm just one of your commissioners I'd say you know I, I really like to see two things you know how are we doing compared to our budget our operating plan and then I always like to see how are we doing compared to the prior year and even over a longer period. Because we have two goals, you know, the more important goal is to get better all the time, mm -hmm. or try to, and the other one is if we make a plan, deliver the plan. So, you know, having those two perspectives, and I think for Mike, you know, that's generally where you'd want to be. Right on, yeah. But, but, but make, Make it so we have this obligation to look through the whole packet and even look at all the damn checks, and, you know, expenses because we have this oversight responsibility, um, and that's important. So you don't let us off the hook. With, that's why there's all that stuff. But but I'd love to look at the f top end first and have it really be clear and simple. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So we've got that. That's part of my question that Mike can probably answer is from a oversight perspective are there certain things that you are required to look at for instance in historically yeah from what I have seen some boards look at the specific AP checks others don't yeah. they just look at the financial because of our investment and history we have to, we have to, have to look, have to look at the checks okay I think our rate That's payers, what I, that I our, rate payers our rate payers expect us to be and doing. that's fine okay and hopefully with you here we'll be less you know we, we hope that you'll be looking at them too. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. In, in fact, one of the things I was going to tell you, one, one of the projects, and it, this isn't going to be an ongoing thing, one of the things I'm, I'm doing is, is looking at our internal controls yes. to make sure that there is the proper division, and I work with the auditor as well. When I come up with a plan, I say, Mike, this is what I want to go with the auditor. He's like, ask him, ask him. So I'm looking at internal controls as well, especially with money coming in and money going out. Yep. That, that's, so that's, I'm getting some written documentation of what our controls are and who is responsible and, for And once, once you have that new approach, we just want to know what it is because, gotcha. because people will ask and, and we need to be. And the truth of the matter is um, it gives everybody, including hopefully our ratepayers, a warm feeling to know that we've got five commissioners looking at every check. The, the way we're though, going to stop a future embezzlement is what you're going to put in place. Right. I agree. Yeah, because it's like, I mean, it's incredibly hard. I mean, that's the first place you to know? find it. it. It shouldn't come after <laughs> y'all find it. It should be yeah. internal. The, the, other, the other thing in the reporting, besides the format, is the timing. We're sitting here in the middle of November, and we're looking at September. Yeah. yeah. And if we could get more something closer to when our meeting yes. is so that we have let's say October because we're great we're three weeks into November mm -hmm. now that would right. be a big yeah, we don't help. have to have everything 
but, but something. Well, that, I've been questioning that why it's so late, and the answer I've received, I think there's a way to get around, not to get around it, but to accommodate it, and it involves starting the month in process earlier. We don't wait until that last invoice comes in that we're waiting on. Right. We start before then, so that we've got all these other things in place. Last minute, we get an invoice, post it, we got the financials ready. Right. Really uh, already, just that you made two changes there last week, or two weeks ago, that already sped this process up by a week. I, mean, I had stuff a week earlier than you know, I normally if, if, we, if we can't have month end, if we can have three weeks into the, into yeah. the, in other words, there's nothing holy about having it for the, for a calendar month. I mean, that matches up with the budget, but well, I, the budget's I actually pretty think linear that, anyway. I actually think that once I get this in place, and, and again, I've got lots of ideas that it's just gonna take some time. We've gotta get some organization within the office because the staff, Oh, except for one person, staff is virtually new. Yeah. So we got to get some organization and some direction. But um, where I was the CFO at the last place, by three days after we got the last invoice, I had the books closed and the financials ready. That's best in class. That's so, I, and I'm not saying that's that can work here, but that's a goal that I have. Yeah. So I'm thinking, how do we get there? But if you're a weekend, instead of three days, that's still before we have exactly. our next meeting. Exactly. And striving for it, just striving for a speedier close, I think brings all sorts of good streamlining, all sorts of good discipline. So that's great. Are, are, are you able, uh, would you be able to give us a copy of the internal controls that you're creating? Like a list? Um, yes. Right. Do you, like at the next board meeting? Do you want to do sure. That? I can do that. Got that on the list. That's great. Absolutely. Thanks. So I'm thinking maybe I'm, I'm listening to all of you, including Beth. And there's section, kind of a couple of several sections of financial documents that we, we provide historically. Maybe you could target one of them or mm -hmm. two of them. You know, next month, hey, these two chunks of information, this is how you've been seeing them. This is the way I've done it in the past, and I like it better because of X or Y, and then let them choose. That works. Yeah. And then we can just work through yeah. what we've been doing, yeah. and then you can build on anything you want to add after that. And we'll, I think we'll, all of us will be realistic, and you've got a lot to do. You've got a lot on your plate. We're going into the budgeting time. It isn't, don't feel like we expect you to reinvent the whole world in one month. <laughs> no. It's you. just making progress. You and Mike decide what your priority is. If every board meeting you can show us one area where we've made some progress, that's sure. a victory. Absolutely. Awesome. I, I have a couple questions. I don't know, there are a number of accounts that just aren't populated at all. And are those new? I didn't look at all their statements. So are those new accounts or they're just? Um, I'm not aware of any new accounts. Okay. They're, they've been in existence. They, and okay. I think historically they don't have. In there. Okay. Well, yeah. some of the accounts, for example, if you look at 92805, which isn't populated, that's, that's a regulatory account. There's no regulatory proceedings related okay. to that account. Right. It's just not going to be populated. Okay. And I put in the, whether or not they have a zero balance or if it's, there's actual numbers in that, I put them all in there just to show that these are all the accounts right. that I don't. We actually take the whole trial balance and pop, have got a spreadsheet that's got all the formulas in it. So it's every number that's out there. We're not leaving anything off just because it has a zero balance. Right. right. Okay. Nor are we processing things out in space and spreadsheets that don't tie into the system anymore. Yeah, that's one key thing. That's, <laughs> hey, that's one improvement that's already been made is there's yeah. no more spreadsheets for payroll anymore. Everything yeah. is in UPN and right. all the all the data is wow. right there and you just spit it out. That's great. Okay. Congratulations. <laughs> Thank you. Well, that's, that, that's going to be beneficial because uh, the next big project that I've been tasked with is the 941s. You guys remember uh, what that is? Yeah, I the don't cafeteria know. plan. That oh, okay. I was wondering if that's okay. Yeah. Yeah, that's. So I've, there's a I've put her in, 
connected her and Chris and said, you guys are the brains here, <laughs> fix it. Okay. <clears throat> Any other questions on the uh, financials? I, I have one, it's not, it's a, you know, we had the whole issue of, of this assessment that was done. Yep. And what I wondered, and I didn't have a chance to go back and look at the numbers, and I don't know if you recall, but when I look, and I'm on the balance sheet, um, and net utility plant is, is 5.4 million. And what I'm wondering is how does that compare to the valuations <coughs> that were done? Because it would seem to me that the valuations shouldn't be in excess right. of that amount because that's what's in our rate base. And Understood. Yeah. So anyhow, I put that out there. I don't yeah. know if you've already looked at that or not, but that, that, that was sort of nagging at me. Haven't gotten to the to the haven't got the whole pie on the plate yet, but the okay. Hardwick piece is pretty nailed down to the fact that uh, whatever this original pilot agreement was must have governed the process over these last many many years. Um, from what I understand, Alberta uh, has been the town clerk for 20 years now. And she's just been processing this thing for since she's been around because that's what has been done. But nobody's been able to find any documents to say this is X because of Y or this is Z because of two. But I had a vague recollection that the Hardwick number was in the range of, of what our net utility plant is. Absolutely. Which, that, said, which says to me that that number is too high. Is too high. I agree with you. Yeah. Um, so the DA is still. Um, calling me data, and that's one of the questions is, show me how you came up with this five point whatever million. Yeah. Anything else on the financials? I, I, and I, I, don't, if, I don't know what this is, so if, if somebody could explain it, like a patronage capital, capital uh, on, let's see, under? On the balance sheet? On the balance sheet, yeah. And just, I mean, I, I know, having been part of a, like a co-op, co okay. like a co-op sure before. It's our previous years. It's like, it's like shareholders equity. I'm sorry? That's okay, go ahead. Well, yeah, kind of, but. <laughs> yeah, sort of. It's a shareholder. It's, um, just, it's, it's, it's previous years, net income, it's okay. rolled in. It's just usually it's used at, you know, more literal interpretation. Patriarch capital is usually used with, with co-ops, and then it's. But it gets the, it's an equity buildup. It is an equity buildup. Okay. So we're just using that. It's just the term. That just the term. Okay. Yeah. Yes. Got it. Okay. Yes. I didn't. Yeah. And these will be numbered next month. <laughs> that would be great. That would be a helpful. One. Yeah. So as it turns out. I've been putting these together and I can't number them other than what I do. But as it turns out, Beth identified that we've been paying for the right version of Adobe that we can do that. <laughs> Jessica was the only one that had access to it. <laughs> okay. All right. If there's nothing else on the financials, uh, next item is the manager's report. Um, any questions, comments? Yes. So that's pretty concerning, the <clears throat> issue of the hourly rate for the linemen. Yeah. Um, I mean, we obviously don't want to all of a sudden see an exodus because they can get paid you know, $2 more. But we can't, I mean, when is the next uh, review and update of the union contract? So we have the existing bargaining agreement that we have does not expire until June of 2023. So this coming June is one more wage increase that will carry us to June of 2023, at which time we would need to enter into yeah. a new agreement. I would, I would suggest that to the extent we want to discuss that item, that we should go into executive session to have that discussion. Mm. So. I just got to leave though, so I yeah, want to raise yeah. that issue. 
and I think, and we can, we could, we can. It doesn't have to be this month. I don't yeah, think. Yeah, the agreement's public. That's that's no problem. We can talk about that. Thing. No, no. I was thinking beyond. Uh, beyond that, that, you're absolutely correct. We don't want to be discussing that. Okay. Um, oh, it's, a, it's a concern. I'll take yes. <laughs> and before I leave, I have forgotten. What is that legislature meeting date? Sixth December. At that uh, it is December sixth. I think it's like ten thirty or December. December sixth. I think it's ten thirty a.m. I don't have that written down anywhere. Uh, I'll email it to you. Could, can you send an email to everybody yep. with that? December 6th at 10 a.m. And, and is that here? Uh, I think it's virtual. Oh, it's virtual? Yeah. Okay. You better. Then send, then if it's virtual, then send an invite. Yep. Okay. Yeah, I had it on my calendar, but I don't have an invite with how to get it. Well, I never got it on. Okay. Will do. So yes, Nat, they, I'll just close that by saying, you know, I brought that uh, to your attention just so you're aware. Um, yeah, I'm really certainly, glad you brought that. Certainly with really all the information there, that was really yeah. important. Because, I mean, everybody's talking about inflation right now, and right. so it's, it's, it's an issue. Yeah, well, those, those rates have gone up more than inflation. Yeah. <laughs> so instead of a Christmas party, you have a Christmas bonus. So... I appreciate everybody who's willing to come at 4.30 and thank you very much for doing so and I've got to take off. Happy Thanksgiving. Can't be late yeah. next one since I start. Yeah. <laughs> Any other questions or comments with respect to the general manager's report? If not, I have some. Um, what were the three? Mike wanted a, a better uh, prior to prioritization of my list, which I can do. And there was two others, which I don't recall. Um, oh, uh, yeah. Oh, you said a better on now? the settlement uh, on the settlement monies list. Yes. Yeah, uh, that was one thing. I I wondered if we could see a year by year. Yeah. Uh, because I, I could fiddle yeah. with it. Um, and I had I had a bunch of, of questions on, on on some of these items um, on the on the um, transmission agreement. Can can you give us an update on the payback analysis on that? Yeah. So we pay Green Mountain Power right now about one hundred and seventy five thousand dollars under the Schedule Twenty One Schedule Twenty One transmission mm -hmm. agreement. Uh, that will be eliminated because so that was a, real, was be, a real simple that yes, real I simple. Did, it's, thanks I'm, I'm there. no problems um, and then that's an easy one on the truck yeah um, what's the life expectancy for a truck normally 10 years yeah. so so does it make sense and I suppose it depends on where we are at at the time on interest rates to, to borrow rather than to fund it out of current when, when I looked at this list, and there's all kinds of interesting things here, this is a lot more than, than the KBS money. Oh, yeah. Only seven yeah. million. <laughs> yeah. So, you don't have to build it. Right. If you build it, they will come. That's our unknown. Um, I just wondered on, on the truck and on some of the other items, should we be looking at that more from a, from a borrowing yeah. standpoint? Yeah, I definitely think we should look at that. And um, I definitely will. But, but yeah, I think the prioritization and doing it on a year by year would be would be helpful. Okay. So maybe what maybe a way to put that into motion that to be a tool for us and for my is go ahead and as you do that, flip it over into an Excel spreadsheet where you can have columns. You know, you can have your item and then as you dream up things like you want to say, where's the spending really going to fall year by year? You can yep. put those year by year columns in. Yep. Or you can put a you know, column in with the payback or you can put some notes or other things. And then you can start to maybe, maybe you come up with a prioritization code. Yeah, this really was just to get the And then in Excel started. you can do all that sure. stuff of sort. Because one of the questions is, um, this is terrific having such a big list of really good ideas and the first thing it does is says this cash we're holding we can put it to work that's yeah. one number two 
our job, if you've got great ideas that are very fundable, our job is to borrow whatever money you need to do the good things you need to do, as long as we work through. Yeah, right? I mean, yeah. So that's what this could be a tool. This could be a tool to get the money to work, and then see what additional money you need, or we want. To yeah. Get and use. Yeah. Yeah. So, man, it's terrific. Yeah. Um, so the uh, one of the follow-ups you had Lynn, with me last month was about the uh, excess of FDIC monies in the yes, bank. Yes, yes, thank you. So how that works is um, I caught up with Rhonda today at the bank, and she's actually retiring literally today. <laughs> so she passed me to, to the new person. But explain that how the process works with Union Bank is once a year, they look at what our uh, average balance was, which for 2020, I believe, was $350,000 in the account. So then they actually go out and they went out and secured a, a line of credit note through the FLH Bank of Boston. And the way that program works, the Union Bank is the member and this line of credit supplies an insurance policy such that if the union bank were to fail and our money disappeared we are covered for our bank balance plus uh, five hundred and thirty eight thousand dollars so it's like eight hundred and some odd thousand dollars we have coverage <clears throat> now for 2021, she said, I actually was just looking at these because we do them January 4th of every year and I see you have a higher balance than normal. I said, yeah, we do. And uh, she says, yeah, so January by January 4th, if you have a specific number, let, let this other lady know what you want it to be. Alternately, we're gonna put it in at like 1.45 million and they lock that in as part of our services. Uh, under being a municipality, a municipal entity. So, so that, that applies to, to us because we're, be, that, that, that wouldn't apply to an average Correct, business. that's correct. They provide oh, it to us because we're a municipal entity. Oh, but, but is it a line of credit or is it an insurance policy? Because I mean, it's, why? They call it a line of credit, but it is, it works just like and an who's, insurance who's policy. And who's the issuer of a line of credit? The FLH Bank of Boston. And I'll, I'll send you her emails. That would, that, that would be she great. has a link to the bank in there and everything. Uh, so I, what what I'm wondering is, uh, in every loan agreement that I've ever negotiated, and I have negotiated quite a few, there's usually a clause that <laughs> says the lender doesn't have to keep shelling out money if the borrower is bankrupt or insolvent. And so if the bank is in trouble, it seems a curious time. I can see why an insurer who's, who's insuring a chunk of things would, would have to pay, but why, why a lender? And that's why I asked, yep. is, is this so, a line of credit? So I'll get you the actual documents from that, her. That would be, uh, but yes, there, but is, there is, a, is something there. There is something there, yes. Good. That's good. That's great. Um, on a more prosaic note, is, is, is um, because I didn't realize that H11, until I saw your thing, that H11 had actually energized and and so they've closed now and they're 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 fully on. Encore is gone and this the finance company now owns it. Yeah. Well, yeah, but Encore is leasing it back. Great. It's a sale. It's a sale lease back. Encore is. Yes. Yes. Absolutely. Um, are they putting out any kind of a press release? It would be nice for the community to know that this is out there in the Yes, the Julia, our, our lady at BEPSA and Encore's uh, PR person are finalizing uh, the ribbon cutting. And I actually forgot to bring that. She sent me an email Friday afternoon uh, with the two possible guest speakers that I wanted you to give me feedback on or if you wanted a different one. She didn't have Chip on the final list, so she didn't? She did not. Oh, so that might be okay. one that we wanted to circle back Yeah. Um, I mean, Chip is our rep. Yep. And um, 
but but I'm, I'm asking even not a, a ribbon cutting, but just something in the newspaper that lets people know yeah, that press, this is press release. any kind of a press release. Uh, there has not been, and actually the local paper contacted me about it, and I said, well, there's going to be a, a ceremony, so uh, let me get you invited to that, and you can participate and get photos. You said, of the, wolf, you said the Wilkett paper? Pardon me? I'm sorry, what paper? Gazette. Local, oh, local, 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 local. Local. Local, I just... Sorry. I need, no, I probably need to get my hearing checked. Actually, well, so counting on them writing an article rather than writing a press release and saying, here well, we, we go. Well, we, we... So if you guys want to get something in now, the, well, lo the local paper is chomping to do something. Um, I mean, I just... Happy I, to do that. Well, first of all, I, I, we need... I don't know that we can put anything in that without Encore's approving it. I, I don't remember, I haven't gone back to look at the contract to That's see what, oh, it's typical, yeah. um, to see what um, the contract says about publicity and press releases and that kind of thing. You want me so to you, have Eli check and confirm we can? Uh, or? Yeah, or, or you know, you can look, look and see, I mean, it may be quite Or I can just ask their PR person. Um, I mean, I can, I can take a look at the contract yeah. too, but, um, I don't know if we make deadline or not. There is a web uh, page coordinator in Hardwick that can add it to the town land, you know, home page. I'm, so, I'm sorry, I couldn't hear what you were saying. You could add the press release to the town home page on the town website fairly easily. Yeah. Once you find out if you have permission. Well, in any case, I mean, yeah, there's lots of ways of, of Publicizing it. It's a question of whether we whether we can even publicize it. If you find out you can, Maya is very responsive in helping getting that done. Right. She's our town person. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Anything else on the manager's report? And any questions on Eli's report? I think it's pretty self-explanatory, so. And um, I, uh, if you remember this net metering bill review <laughs> topic, that was really prompted by, I think, Matt had some people reach out to him, and he was wondering on his own bill, and I had looked at my own bill and said, yeah. We've now even though we've had it on the agenda in other months, we've, on, on the sidelines, we've kind of talked and reviewed. We understand it now. And uh, we don't really have any suggestions. So what, what uh, I volunteered is that it can come off the, the agenda unless other commissioners feel like they want to talk about it. I'm, I mean, I, I'm fine with it coming off. I would still like to see us do bill inserts? Yes. That yeah, explain that. The, 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 yes. you know, in other words, there's a bill insert for the residential rate, for the commercial rate, for the net metering rate, and... And that might be the first one you do, since that's probably the one where the people are... The that, that just explains how to read a bill and does a typical bill calculation and just goes in, certainly when somebody goes on the rate or when a rate changes, or if somebody comes in and has a question, then we can just hand them the thing and say, right. Here yeah. it is. Now, look, looking at their meter, I look at the meter, I go, I don't know what that number is. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I figured it out after a while. I can figure out the pattern, but it is pretty, it's not intuitive. Well, that's a different question. Right, it's right. how you but read it, a meter. Right, but it is informing the customer about how, how the, that meter is working. Um, anything else? I would like to have a brief executive session to discuss a confidential customer matter. Um, so I, I, if we don't have any other public business, then, the public session, yeah. then, then 
I will make a motion to discuss a confidential customer Second. matter. Oh. It, oh, it is 7.46. No, it's 6.46. <laughs> Somebody's got to climb up there with a the ladder. Thank you, everyone. Thank you for coming. Thank you for joining us. We're actually thrilled you came and had, had the interest. You're welcome anytime. Well, I appreciate that. And, um, so Vince will be catching up with you. Yes, okay. we'll be in touch. Thank you. Thanks. Take care. I, I had one question on the arrearages. If, uh, sorry to Okay. Well, here. <laughs> all right, we're not in executive session. <laughs> <laughs> Right. We're in a, we're we're in exe executive. Oh, we are. Okay. We're in executive session. And oh, I didn't think so. We were, okay. Yeah. I didn't realize we had moved into executive session.